Coldplay are a British pop band formed in London in 1996. They consist of vocalist and pianist Chris Martin, guitarist Johnny Buckland, bassist Guy Berryman, drummer Will Champion and creative director Phil Harvey. They met at University College London, and began playing music together from 1996 to 1998, first calling themselves Pectoralts and then Starfish. After releasing Safety EP independently in 1998, the band signed with Parlophone during the next year. Their debut album, Parachutes, included the breakthrough hit Yellow and received a Brit Award for British Album of the Year, a Grammy Award for Best Alternative Music Album, as well as a Mercury Prize nomination. Their second album, A Rush of Blood to the Head, won the same accolades while also spawning the singles Clocks and The Scientist, with the former winning a Grammy Award for Record of the Year. The band's third album, X and Y, was the best-selling of the year worldwide, topping the charts of over 30 countries. On Viva La Vida, or Death and All His Friends, Coldplay achieved the distinction once again and explored new musical territory following the completion of what they considered a trilogy. It earned them a Grammy Award for Best Rock Album and their first Album of the Year nomination, while title track Viva La Vida marked the first time a British group went number one in both the United Kingdom and United States in the 21st century. Since then, Coldplay further diversified their sound with subsequent albums Milo Xylato, Ghost Stories, A Head Full of Dreams, Everyday Life and Music of the Spheres. Each one presented a specific theme and added new musical styles to the band's original repertoire, including electronica, ambient, pop, R&B, funk, classical, jazz fusion, and progressive rock. They have also been noted for dazzling, euphoric live performances, which critics have stated are when the band come alive and make the most sense. To celebrate their 20th anniversary in 2018, they released a career-spanning documentary directed by Matt Whitecross, featuring previously unseen behind-the-scenes footage. With 100 million albums sold worldwide, Coldplay are the most successful band of the 21st century and one of the best-selling music acts of all time. According to Fuse, they are also the sixth most awarded group in history. Other notable achievements include the sixth highest grossing tour of all time, three of the 50 highest selling albums ever in the United Kingdom, the most number one records in the country without ever missing the top, most nominations and wins for a band in Brit Awards history, and becoming the first British group to debut at number one on the Billboard Hot 100. Coldplay are considered one of the most influential bands of the 21st century as well, with Forbes describing them as the standard for the current alternative scene. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame included A Rush of Blood to the Head on their 200 definitive albums list, and the single Yellow is part of their songs that shaped rock and roll exhibition for being one of the most successful and important recordings in the industry. In spite of their popularity and impact, Coldplay have also earned a reputation as polarizing music icons. Chapter 1 – History Chapter 1 – Section 1 – 1996-1999 – Formation and First Years Chris Martin and Johnny Buckland first met each other during their orientation week, at University College London in September 1996. The pair spent the rest of the year planning a band, which led to the formation of Pector Outs. They began to write their first songs together in 1997, and practiced every night. That same year, Martin met Tim Rice Oxley, who was invited to be Coldplay's keyboard player but declined, since Keane was already active. The meeting was ultimately responsible for shaping both bands as quartets. During the following month Spectre Outs would then drop their name, while Guy Berryman and Will Champion joined the group. In 1998, they named themselves Starfish in a panic after their debut live performance was scheduled at the Laurel Tree by Champion only a few days after he became part of the lineup. Weeks later, the band finally settled on the name Coldplay, which was suggested by Tim Crompton, a local student who had been using it for his own group. In May 1998, they released Safety EP independently. The project was financed by Phil Harvey for £1,500 and only about 500 copies were pressed, most of them were given away to record labels, friends and family. After Martin complained to Harvey about the vice-like grip one of the Camden promoters had on Coldplay, Harvey suggested the group book their own concert at Dingwalls, and they subsequently sold their first copies of Safety EP at the venue. The event is generally considered the time when he was first known as their manager. Harvey then dropped out his classical studies degree at Trinity College, Oxford to work with the band. They signed a brief contract with Fierce Panda Records at the end of the year and as part of the deal released a debut single Brothers and Sisters in April 1999. After completing their final examinations at university, Coldplay signed a five-album contract with Parlophone. They went into the studio to record a second extended play, The Blue Room, after making their first appearance at the Glastonbury Festival. 
5,000 copies were made available to the public in October, with Bigger Stronger receiving BBC Radio 1 airplay. The recording sessions for the extended play were tumultuous. Champion was briefly fired from the band, but Martin later pleaded with him to return after kicking him out, and because of his guilt, went on a drinking binge. Eventually they worked out their differences and put in place a new set of rules to keep the group intact. Inspired by bands like U2 and R.E.M., Coldplay decided to operate as a democracy. The band determined to fire anyone who used hard drugs. Chapter 1 Section 2, 2000-2001, Parachutes The band first planned to record their debut album, Parachutes, over the span of two weeks. However, due to tours and other live performances, the recording took place between September 1999 and April to May 2000. The album was recorded at Rockfield Studios, Matrix Studios, and Wessex Sound Studios with producer Ken Nelson, although the majority of Parachute's tracks were recorded at Liverpool's Par Street Studios. American engineer Michael Brower in New York mixed all of the songs for the album. During that time they played on the Carling Tour, which showcased up-and-coming acts. After releasing two EPs without a hit song, Coldplay had their first top 40 hit with the lead single from Parachutes, Shiver, which was released in March 2000, the same week Coldplay played the forum in Tunbridge Wells supporting the band Terrace. Shiver peaked at the number 35 position on the UK singles chart. June 2000 was a pivotal moment in Coldplay's history, the band embarked on their first headlining tour, including a performance at the Glastonbury Festival. The band also released the single Yellow, it was Coldplay's first release to reach the top five and rose to number four on the UK singles chart. The minimalistic music video for Yellow was filmed at Studland Bay in Dorset, and featured Martin singing the song in one continuous shot as he walked along the beach. Yellow and Shiver were initially released as EPs in the spring of 2000. The former was later released as a single in the United Kingdom on the 26th of June 2000. In the United States, the song was released as the lead single from the then-untitled debut album. In October 2000, the track was sent to US college and alternative radio outlets. Coldplay released Parachutes on the 10th of July 2000 in the United Kingdom via their record label, Parlophone. The album debuted at number one on the UK Albums Chart. It was released on the 7th of November 2000 by record label Network in North America. The album has been made available on various formats since its initial release, both Parlophone and Network released it as a CD in 2000, and it was also released as a cassette by US label Capital in 2001. In the following year, Parlophone issued the album as an LP. Four singles were released from Parachutes, including Shiver and Yellow, and enjoyed popularity in the UK and US. The third single was Trouble, which reached number 10 in the UK charts. It was released more than a year later in the US, and reached number 28 in the Alternative Songs chart. In December 2001, the band released a limited edition CD, Min Spies, featuring a remix of Yellow and the Christmas song Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. It was pressed to 1,000 copies, and was issued only to fans and journalists. Parachutes was nominated for the Mercury Music Prize in September 2000. Having found success in Europe, the band set their sights on North America, by releasing the album there in November 2000, and started the US club tour in February 2001. At the 2001 Brit Awards in February, Coldplay earned awards for Best British Group, and Best British Album. Although Parachutes was a slow-burning success in the United States, it eventually reached, double platinum status. The album was critically well received and earned a Best Alternative Music Album honors at the 2002 Grammy Awards. Chris Martin said after Parachutes was released that the album's success was meant to elevate the band's status to the biggest, best band in the world. After single-handedly managing the band until early 2001, Harvey resigned due to the stress of having to perform duties that typically require a team of people. He became the group's creative director and is often referenced as their fifth member, Dave Holmes replaced him as manager. Chapter 1 Section 3, 2002-2004, A Rush of Blood to the Head After the success of Parachutes, Coldplay returned to the studio in September 2001 to begin work on their second album, A Rush of Blood to the Head, once again with Ken Nelson producing. They had trouble focusing in London and decided to relocate to Liverpool, where they recorded some of the songs on Parachutes. Once there, vocalist Chris Martin said that they became obsessed with recording. In My Place was the first song recorded for the album. 
The band released it as the album's lead single because it was the track that made them want to record a second album, following a strange period of not really knowing what we were doing three months after the success of Parachutes. According to Martin one thing kept us going, recording in my place. Then other songs started coming. The band wrote more than 20 songs for the album. Some of their new material, including In My Place and Animals, was played live while the band was still touring Parachutes. The album's title was revealed through a post on the band's official website. The album was released in August 2002 and spawned several popular singles, including In My Place, Clocks, and The Ballad The Scientist. The latter was inspired by George Harrison's All Things Must Pass, which was released in 1970. Coldplay toured from the 19th of June 2002 to the 8th of September 2003 for the A Rush of Blood to the Head tour. They visited five continents, including co-headlining festival dates at Glastonbury Festival, B 2003 and Rock Vector. Many concerts showcased elaborate lighting and individualized screens reminiscent of U2's Elevation Tour and Nine Inch Nails' Fragility Tour. During the extended tour, Coldplay recorded a live DVD and CD, Live 2003, at Sydney's Horden Pavilion. At the 2003 Brit Awards held at Earl's Court, London, Coldplay received awards for Best British Group and Best British Album. On the 28th of August, 2003, Coldplay performed The Scientist at the 2003 MTV Video Music Awards at the Radio City Music Hall in New York City, and won three awards. In December 2003, readers of Rolling Stone magazine chose Coldplay as the best artist and the best band of the year. At that time the band covered the Pretenders' 1983 song 2000 Miles. 2000 Miles was the top-selling UK download that year, with proceeds from the sales donated to future forests and stop handgun violence campaigns. A Rush of Blood to the Head won the Grammy Award for Best Alternative Music Album at the 2003 Grammy Awards. At the 2004 Grammy Awards, Coldplay earned Record of the Year for Clocks. Chapter 1 Section 4, 2005 to 2007, X and Y. Coldplay spent most of 2004 out of the spotlight, taking a break from touring and releasing a satire music video of a song from a fictional band titled The Nappies while recording their third album. X and Y was released in June 2005 in UK and Europe. This new, delayed release date had put the album back into the next fiscal year, and the late release was blamed for a drop in EMI's stock. It became the best-selling album of 2005 with worldwide sales of 8.3 million. The lead single, Speed of Sound, made its radio and online music store debut on the 18th of April and was released as a CD on the 23rd of May 2005. X and Y entered the album charts of 20 countries at the number one position and was the third fastest selling album in UK chart history. Two other singles were released that year, Fix You in September and Talk in December. Critical reaction to X and Y was mostly positive, though slightly less enthusiastic than that of its predecessor. The New York Times critic John Perellis infamously described Coldplay as the most insufferable band of the decade, whereas NME awarded the album nine-tenths calling it confident, bold, ambitious, bunged with singles and impossible to contain, X and Y doesn't reinvent the wheel but it does reinforce Coldplay as the band of their time. Comparisons between Coldplay and U2 became commonplace. Martin said the critical review of the album by the New York Times made him feel liberated as he agreed with a lot of the points. So, in a way, it was liberating to see that someone else realized that also. From June 2005 to March 2007, Coldplay went on their Twisted Logic tour, which included festival dates like Coachella, Isle of Wight Festival, Glastonbury and the Austin City Limits Music Festival. In July 2005, the band appeared at Live 8 in Hyde Park, where they played a rendition of the Verve's Bittersweet Symphony with Richard Ashcroft on vocals. On the 28th of August, Coldplay performed Speed of Sound at the 2005 MTV Video Music Awards in Miami. In September, Coldplay recorded a new version of How You See the World with reworked lyrics for War Child's Help, a Day in the Life charity album. In February 2006, Coldplay earned Best Album and Best Single Honors at the Brit Awards. Three more singles were released during 2006 and 2007, The Hardest Part, What If and White Shadows. Chapter 1 Section 5, 2008 to 2010, Viva La Vida, or Death and All His Friends. In October 2006, Coldplay began work on their fourth studio album, Viva La Vida, or Death and All His Friends, with producer Brian Eno. 
Taking a break from recording, the band toured Latin America in early 2007, finishing the Twisted Logic tour while performing in Chile, Argentina, Brazil, and Mexico. After recording in churches and other venues in Latin America and Spain during their tour, the band said the album would likely reflect Hispanic influence. The group spent the rest of the year recording most of the album with Eno. Martin described Viva La Vida as a new direction for Coldplay, a change from their past three albums, which the band felt was a trilogy that they had finished. He said the album featured less of his falsetto as he allowed his voice's lower register to take precedence. Some songs, such as Violet Hill contain distorted guitar riffs and bluesy undertones. Violet Hill was confirmed as the first single, with a radio release date of the 29th of April 2008. After the first play, it was freely obtainable from Coldplay's website from 12.15pm for one week until it became commercially available on the 6th of May. Violet Hill entered the UK Top 10, US Top 40 and charted well in the rest of the world. The title track, Viva La Vida, was also released exclusively on iTunes, it became the band's first number one on both the US Billboard Hot 100, and the UK official charts. Coldplay performed the song Live for the first time at the 2008 MTV Movie Awards on the 1st of June. Viva La Vida became iTunes' best-selling song of 2008. Upon release, Viva La Vida or Death and All His Friends topped the album charts worldwide and was the world's best-selling album of 2008. It hit number one on the UK album chart despite having come on the market only three days previously. In that time, it sold 302,000 copies, being one of the fastest-selling albums in the country's history. By the end of June, it had set a new record for most downloaded album ever. In October 2008, Coldplay won two Q awards for Best Album for Viva La Vida or Death and All His Friends and Best Act in the World Today. On the 9th of November, Coldplay were named the world's best-selling act of 2008 at the World Music Awards in Monte Carlo. They also picked up two other awards, World's Best Selling Rock Act and Great Britain's Best Selling Act. The band followed up Viva La Vida or Death and All His Friends with the Prospects March EP, which was released on the 21st of November 2008. The extended play features songs from the album sessions and was originally made available on its own, while the album got reissued with all EP tracks included on a bonus disc. Life in Technicolor 2 was the only single released. Coldplay began their Viva La Vida tour in June with a free concert at Brixton Academy in London. This was followed two days later by a 45-minute performance that was broadcast live from outside BBC Television Centre. Released in late 2008, Lost. Became the third single from the album, featuring a new version with Jay-Z called Lost Plus. After performing the opening set on the 14th of March 2009 for sound relief at the Sydney Cricket Ground, Coldplay headlined a sold-out concert later that same night. Sound Relief is a benefit concert for victims of the Victorian bushfire crisis, and the Queensland floods. On the 4th of December 2008, Joe Satriani filed a copyright infringement suit against Coldplay in the United States District Court for the Central District of California. Satriani's suit asserted that the Coldplay song Viva La Vida includes substantial original portions of the Satriani song If I Could Fly from his 2004 album, Is There Love in Space? The Coldplay song in question received two Grammy Awards for Song of the Year. The band denied the allegation. An unspecified settlement was ultimately reached between the parties. Coldplay were nominated for four awards at the 2009 Brit Awards, British Group, British Live Act, British Single and British Album. At the 51st Grammy Awards in the same year, Coldplay won three Grammy Awards in the categories for Song of Year for Viva La Vida, Best Rock Album for Viva La Vida or Death and All His Friends, and Best Vocal Pop Performance by a Duo, or Group for Viva La Vida. A live album titled Left Right Left Right Left was recorded at various shows during the tour. Left Right Left Right Left, released on the 15th of May 2009, was to be given away at the remaining concerts of their Viva La Vida tour. It was also released as a free download from their website. Following the Viva La Vida tour, Coldplay announced another Latin America tour to take place in February and March 2010, in which they were to visit Mexico, Argentina, Brazil, and Colombia. In October 2009, Coldplay won Song of the Year for Viva La Vida, the American Society of Composers, Authors and Publishers Awards in London. In December 2009, Rolling Stone readers voted the group the fourth best artist of the 2000s, they were also included in Q's list of artists of the century. In December 2010 the band released Christmas Lights. 
The song received very positive reviews, and the music video features a cameo from actor Simon Pegg, a close friend of Chris Martin, who plays a violin playing Elvis impersonator in the background. Chapter 1 Section 6, 2011-2012, Milo Xylato. The band finished recording the new album in mid-2011. When Martin and Champion were interviewed by BBC Radio and asked about the album's lyrical themes, Martin replied it's about love, addiction, OCD, escape and working for someone you don't like. When asked whether or not their fifth album would be out by the summer, Martin and Champion said that there was plenty of work to be done before releasing it. They confirmed several festival appearances before its release date, including a headlining spot at the 2011 Glastonbury Festival, Tea in the Park, Austin City Limits Music Festival, Rock in Rio, and Lollapalooza Festival. In an interview on 13 January 2011, Coldplay mentioned two new songs would be included on their upcoming fifth album, Princess of China, and Every Teardrop is a Waterfall. In a February interview Parlophone President Miles Leonard told Hit Quarters that the band was still in the studio working on the album, and that he expected the final version would appear towards the autumn of this year. On the 31st of May 2011, Coldplay announced that Every Teardrop is a Waterfall was the first single for the fifth album. It was released on the 3rd of June 2011. The band presented five new songs at festivals during the summer of 2011, Charlie Brown, Hurts Like Heaven, Us Against the World, Princess of China and Major Minus. On the 12th of August, 2011, Coldplay announced via their official website that Milo Xylato was the new album title, and that it would be released on the 24th of October 2011. On the 12th of September the band released Paradise, the second single from their upcoming album Milo Xylato. On the 23rd of September 2011, tickets for Coldplay's European tour officially went on sale. Demand proved to be very high with most venues selling out in seconds. Milo Xylato was released on the 24th of October 2011, it received mixed to positive reviews and topped the charts in over 34 countries. On the 19th of October 2011, Coldplay performed songs at Apple Incorporated's private memorial for Steve Jobs, including Viva La Vida, Fix You, Yellow and Every Teardrop is a Waterfall. On the 26th of October their Amex unstaged concert at the Plaza de Toros de las Ventos in Madrid, Spain, was streamed by YouTube, as a live webcast, directed by Anton Corbin. On 30 November 2011, Coldplay received three Grammy Award nominations for the 54th Annual Grammy Awards which took place on 12 February 2012 in Los Angeles, and the band performed with Rihanna at the ceremony. On 12 January 2012, Coldplay were nominated for two Brit Awards. On 21 February 2012, they were awarded the Brit Award for Best British Group for the third time. The album was the best-selling rock album in the United Kingdom, selling 908,000 copies. The album's second single, Paradise, was also the best-selling rock single in the UK, selling 410,000 copies. At the 2012 MTV Video Music Awards, Paradise won the Best Rock Video Award. Milo Xylato has sold over 8 million copies worldwide. Coldplay headlined the closing ceremony of the London 2012 Paralympic Games on 9 September 2012, where they performed alongside other artists including Rihanna and Jay-Z. To tie in with their performance at the closing ceremony, the group gave permission for bands who were participating in the bandstand marathon the opportunity to perform their 2008 single Viva La Vida to celebrate the end of the games. In October 2012, the music video for Coldplay's song Hurts Like Heaven was released. The video was based on the story of Milo Xylato, a boy who grew up in tyranny ran by Major Minus. The fictional comics titled Milo Xylato continued on the story portrayed in the music video when the series was released in early 2013. A concert documentary film and live album Coldplay Live 2012 chronicles their tour in support of the Milo Xylato album. The film premiered theatrically for one night only, the 13th of November 2012, and was released on CD and home video on the 19th of November 2012. On the 21st of November, after a concert in Brisbane, Australia, as part on the group's Milo Xylato tour, Coldplay hinted they were set to take a three-year break from touring. Coldplay performed two shows with Jay-Z in the Barclays Center, Brooklyn, New York on the 30th of December and New Year's Eve which ended the Milo Xylato tour. The Milo Xylato tour was named the fourth highest grossing tour worldwide of 2012 with more than $171.3 million earned in ticket sales. Chapter 1 Section 7, 2013-2014, Ghost Stories In an interview with Australian radio station 2 Day FM, Chris Martin revealed that the title for the band's next album would be much easier to pronounce. 
Martin debunked speculation that they were taking a break from touring by saying, this three-year break idea only came about because I said at a gig in Australia that we might not be back there for three years. That's probably true, but that's just how a world tour works. No chance are we taking a three-year break. On the 9th of August, 2013, Coldplay announced the release of their song Atlas, which featured on the soundtrack for the film The Hunger Games, Catching Fire. Its release got pushed back to the 6th of September 2013, and the 8th of September. In December 2013, it was announced that future Coldplay releases would be distributed by Atlantic Records in the US due to restructuring within Warner Music Group following the purchase of Parlophone Records from Emmy on the 25th of February 2014, the band unveiled Midnight, a track from their yet-to-be-released album. In early March 2014, it was announced that the band's sixth album, Ghost Stories, would be released the 19th of May 2014. Ghost Stories is a spiritually driven album that revolves around two major themes mentioned by Chris Martin. The album explores the idea of past actions, and the effects they can have on your future and one's capacity for unconditional love. The band took a different approach for their sixth studio album in contrast to their previous studio albums, with Martin inviting the band to contribute original songwriting material for the album, as opposed to building songs off his ideas as they had done during previous recording sessions. From April to July, Coldplay embarked on a six date Ghost Stories tour in support of the album, playing intimate shows in six cities the Beacon Theatre in New York City on the 5th of May. Royce Hall in Los Angeles on the 19th of May, Casino de Paris in Paris on the 28th of May, Tokyo Dome City Hall in Tokyo on the 12th of June, Enmore Theatre in Sydney on the 19th of June, and closed the tour at the Royal Albert Hall in London on the 2nd of July 2014. The album was made available for pre-order on iTunes, alongside new single Magic. Two more singles from the album, A Sky Full of Stars and True Love, have since been released. Ghost Stories received mixed to positive reviews. The album topped the charts in the UK, the US and most major markets. It received a Grammy Award nomination for Best Pop Vocal Album, and A Sky Full of Stars was nominated for Best Pop Duo Slash Group Performance. In December 2014, Spotify named Coldplay the most streamed band in the world for 2014, and third most streamed artist behind Ed Sheeran and Eminem. Chapter 1 Section 8, 2015 to 2018, A Head Full of Dreams. On the 4th of December 2014, Chris Martin announced in an interview with Zane Lowe on BBC Radio 1 that Coldplay were in the middle of working on their seventh studio album, A Head Full of Dreams. Martin remarked it might be the band's final album and compared it to Harry Potter, it's our seventh thing, and the way we look at it, it's like the last Harry Potter book or something like that. He added that unlike their promotion efforts for Ghost Stories, the band will tour for the seventh record. In an interview with Joe Wiley on BBC Radio 2, Martin hinted at the style of the album by saying that the band were trying to make something colourful and uplifting, yet not bombastic. He also stated that it will be something to shuffle your feet to dot on the 11th of December 2014, the band unveiled a new song, Miracles, which was written and recorded for the World War II drama film Unbroken directed by Angelina Jolie. At the 2015 Billboard Music Awards on the 17th of May, Ghost Stories was named Top Rock Album. On the 26th of September, Coldplay performed at the 2015 Global Citizen Festival in Central Park's Great Lawn in New York, an event organized by Chris Martin advocating for an end to extreme global poverty. Coldplay, along with Beyoncé, Ed Sheeran, and Pearl Jam, headlined the festival which was broadcast on NBC in the US on the 27th of September and the BBC in the UK on the 28th of September. Speaking on Nick Grimshaw's Radio 1 breakfast show on the BBC on the 6th of November, Coldplay confirmed the 4th of December as the release date of A Head Full of Dreams, and a new song from the album, Adventure of a Lifetime premiered on the show. The album has guest appearances from Beyoncé, Gwyneth Paltrow, Noel Gallagher, Tove Lo, and Barack Obama. The album reached number one in the UK, and number two in the US, Australia and Canada among others where it was kept in second place by Adele's 25. The music video for Adventure of a Lifetime featured the band performing as chimpanzees. They were provided consultation with renowned performance capture actor Andy Serkis. On the 27th of November 2015, the first dates to their 2016 A Head Full of Dreams tour were announced. Latin American and European stops were listed, which included three dates at Wembley Stadium, London in June. The North America tour, an extra Wembley concert, and an Oceania tour were later added. On the 5th of December, the band headlined the opening day of the 2015 Jingle Bell Ball, at London's O2 Arena. On the 7th of February 2016 they headlined the Super Bowl 50 halftime show. 
the band were joined by Beyoncé and Bruno Mars. In April 2016, the band were named the sixth best-selling artist worldwide in 2015. On the 26th of June 2016, Coldplay closed the final day of the Glastonbury Festival in England. Their performance included a duet with Barry Gibb, the last surviving member of the Bee Gees. During the band's second night at MetLife Stadium in New Jersey on the 18th of July, Coldplay were joined on stage by Michael J. Fox to recreate a Back to the Future scene. Martin sang Earth Angel before introducing Fox on stage to join the band in performing the Chuck Berry classic Johnny Be Good. The band performed a full set in India for the first time as part of the Global Citizen Festival in Mumbai on the 19th of November 2016. This performance was attended by 80,000 people and also featured many Bollywood stars during the concert. The same month, Coldplay announced in interviews with Absolute Radio and Magic Radio in London that they would be releasing new songs in a new EP called the Kaleidoscope EP. Described as being made from a leftover bag of ideas from the recording of A Head Full of Dreams, Martin stated that it would be released in a couple of months. The band officially announced that the EP was released on the 14th of July 2017. On the 22nd of February 2017, the band released a long-awaited and teased collaboration track with EDM duo The Chainsmokers called Something Just Like This. Reaching number 2 in the UK singles chart and number 3 on the US Billboard Hot 100, it was the lead single from Coldplay's 13th extended play Kaleidoscope, released on the 14th of July 2017. Together, they debuted the song Live at the 2017 Brit Awards with Chris Martin also performing a tribute song to the late George Michael. On the 2nd of March, Martin's birthday, the band released a track from the EP, Hypnotized. Two further releases from the EP, All I Can Think About Is You and Aliens, came out on the 15th of June and the 6th of July 2017 respectively. On the 15th of August, 2017, Coldplay announced that a live album covering the A-Head Full of Dreams tour would be released. On the 8th of October 2017, Coldplay debuted with their new song called Life Is Beautiful at Skew Stadium in San Diego, California. It was written in support after the earthquake that affected Mexico on the 19th of September. Part of the band's show was broadcast at the end of Estamos Unidos Mexicanos, a benefit concert taken place at Mexico City's Zocalo, which included Fix You, Viva La Vida, Adventure of a Lifetime and their new song. Martin stated that the proceeds from the song and concert would be donated to relief efforts for Mexico and other countries. The A-Head Full of Dreams tour was finished in November 2017. Grossing over $523 million, in 2017 it was listed as the third highest grossing concert tour of all time. The promised live album, which is titled Live in Buenos Aires, came out on the 7th of December 2018. Its footage covers the final concert of the tour in La Plata, and a second release named Love in Tokyo, was made available at the same time exclusively for the Japanese market. On the 30th of November 2018, Coldplay released Global Citizen, Episode 1 under the name Los Unidades. It includes Elo, a song with Pharrell Williams featuring Josie. Proceeds from the EP was donated towards efforts to end global poverty. Chapter 1 Section 9, 2019-2020, Everyday Life On the 26th of September 2019, Global Citizen announced that Coldplay would perform at Global Goal Live, the possible dream on the 26th of September 2020. On the 18th of October 2019, mysterious black and white posters began appearing in various countries around the world, with the band in vintage style clothing and a date showing the 22nd of November 1919. The band also changed their profile pictures on social media to a sun and moon, making fans speculate an imminent release of new material. On the 19th of October 2019, a cryptic 5 seconds teaser was released on social media, with orchestral music in the background. On the 21st of October 2019, in a letter sent to fans, the band announced that their eighth studio album would be titled Everyday Life and that it would be a double album, with the first half titled Sunrise and the second half titled Sunset. On the 23rd of October 2019, the album tracks were revealed in advertisements in the band members' local newspapers in the UK, including North Wales Daily Post, and Exeter's Express and Echo. Orphans and Arabesque were then released as the album's lead singles on the 24th of October 2019 on the Animax show on BBC Radio 1, with the latter song being the first Coldplay song to feature profanity. The album was released on the 22nd of November 2019 and marked by a double concert in Amman, Jordan. The concert, which streamed live to YouTube, was performed at sunrise and sunset, corresponding with the subtitles of the album's two halves. Martin had earlier said that the band would not tour to promote the album, until they could work out how our tour can not only be sustainable how can it be actively beneficial, and hope that it would be entirely carbon neutral. 
However, Coldplay performed a one-off show on the 25th of November 2019 for the charity Client Earth at London's Natural History Museum. The band played Beneath Hope, a giant 128-year-old skeleton of a blue whale in the museum's Great Hall. The album debuted at number one on the UK Albums Chart with 81,000 copies sold, making it the band's eighth consecutive UK number one album. It was also the third fastest selling album of 2019, behind Number 6 Collaborations Project and Divinely Uninspired to a hellish extent. On the 24th of November 2020, Coldplay received two nominations for the 63rd Annual Grammy Awards, with one of them being Album of the Year, their first nomination in the category since Viva La Vida. On the 21st of December 2020, Flags was released internationally, the song was originally included as a Japanese bonus track of everyday life. Chapter 1 Section 10, 2021 Present, Music of the Spheres On the 29th of April 2021, Coldplay announced a new single called Higher Power to be released on the 7th of May 2021 with a video livestream coinciding with the release of the single to be aired from the International Space Station. Chris Martin stated in an interview with Zane Lowe that the band would be working with Max Martin and his team on both the song and the new album. He said, Max is our producer right now for everything we do. On the 4th of May 2021, Coldplay were announced as the opening act for the 2021 Brit Awards, where they would be performing Higher Power. On the 22nd of May 2021, their pre-recorded performance at Glastonbury Festival was broadcast online. The band also showcased a new song called Human Heart, featuring R&B duo We Are King. On the 8th of June 2021, the official music video for Higher Power, directed by Dave Myers, premiered on YouTube, following a simpler music video featuring the band performing the song while dancing with CGI alien holograms that premiered on the 7th of May 2021. On the 20th of July 2021, Coldplay announced that their new album Music of the Spheres would be released on the 15th of October 2021, and also announced a track titled Coloratura, which was released the 23rd of July 2021. On the 13th of September 2021, they announced with South Korean pop group BTS the second single, My Universe, which was released on the 24th of September 2021. The song debuted at number three on the UK Singles Chart, being their highest peaking single since Something Just Like This and later went on to debut at number one on the US Billboard Hot 100. A short documentary about the collaboration with BTS was later released on the 26th of September 2021 on the official BTS YouTube channel. Music of the Spheres debuted at number one on the UK Albums Chart, becoming the fastest selling album in the country since Ed Sheeran's 2019 number six collaborations project. The album debuted at number 4 on the US Billboard 200 chart, and reached number 1 on both the Top Alternative Albums and the Top Rock Albums charts. On the 14th of October 2021, Coldplay announced their 8th concert tour, the Music of the Spheres World Tour, which will begin in San Jose, Costa Rica, in March 2022 and will visit three continents, with more tour dates to be announced in the future. The tour is part of an ongoing effort to reduce the band's carbon footprint, Chris Martin explained in an interview with BBC that the tour would feature kinetic flooring that powers the concerts through the movement of concertgoers, as well as bicycles that do the same thing, meaning that the whole show is powered from renewable energy. Martin said that the band's goal is that they will have slightly shifted the status quo of how a tour works. On the 23rd of November 2021, Higher Power was nominated for Best Pop Duo Slash Group Performance at the 64th Annual Grammy Awards. In December 2021, Martin said Coldplay would release three more albums until 2025 during an interview for BBC, with one of them being kind of a musical while their last will be a Back to the Basics self-titled record. He added, however, that the band will still be active with smaller releases and worldwide touring after 2025. On the 23rd of February 2022, the band released a new stripped-down version of Let Somebody Go, and a cover of Kid Cudi's 2000, and 8 single Day and Night. Both songs were part of their Spotify singles release. Chapter 2, Artistry. Chapter 2 Section 1, Creative Process. Bassist Guy Berryman once explained that the band often have a title and concept in mind before the music arrives, which serves to provide a framework into which we can work thematically. During an interview for YouTube, in 2019, lead vocalist Chris Martin described their way of making songs as a series of doors where he usually brings initial ideas to guitarist Johnny Buckland, who either disapproves or gives his input on them. The same happens from Buckland to Berryman, and then drummer Will Champion, allowing each band member to express themselves artistically. This process, however, is known to not always be linear, given how tracks like Magic and Adventure of a Lifetime started through the bass and guitar riffs from Berryman and Buckland respectively. 
When asked about avoiding the use of explicit language in the lyrics, Champion have said that sometimes there are more elegant ways of saying something, and while swear words are extremely useful at times, if you overuse them it lessens their impact. Critics noted what is described as a pattern between overt bids for mainstream success and more self-consciously artsy prestige pieces as well. Buckland commented that knowing that the big is coming allows us to go a lot smaller and be much more insular about what music we make sense. The band are also known to try different aesthetics for the promotion cycle of each record, with James Hall from The Telegraph citing how over the years Coldplay's look has morphed from skinny indie kids to chorus members of Les Miserables, to a sepia-tinged 1919 jazz band. After being questioned about the black attire and white shoes the group used while promoting X and Y, Martin further added on the matter by saying there's great security in looking over at and seeing he's wearing the same colored shoes as me. I suppose it's the same reason why the army wears a uniform, so that you feel part of a clan. And when we are all dressed that way, I just feel very much like is okay, because I am part of this team. Chapter 2 Section 2, Musical and Lyrical Style Coldplay have explored many musical styles throughout their career, with their sound being considered alternative rock, alternative pop, pop rock, post-Britpop, soft rock, and pop. After winning a Grammy Award for Best Rock Album in 2009, Martin jokingly stated in his acceptance speech that they were limestone rock, in comparison to hard rock. In the late 1990s, the EPs released by the band had characteristics of dream pop, setting them apart from future releases. Their first studio album, Parachutes, was described as melodic pop that combined bits of distorted guitar riffs and swishing percussion, being exquisitely dark and artistically abrasive as well. Berryman called it a quiet, polite record, and Champion compared the lyrics to Lou Reed's Perfect Day, saying they are quite moody but with twists that imply optimism, making them ultimately beautiful and happy while the music is really, really sad. He added that it is the kind of thing where you can create differing moods through the sound and lyrics.2002 is a rush of blood to the head, on the other hand, is full of plaintive strums and weary arpeggios, along with a sense of urgency and heartbreak. During an interview, Martin commented that the record's title means doing something on impulse. The album is also noted for having larger, darker, and colder sounds than its predecessor. Critics praised Coldplay for showing a newfound confidence as well. This style was largely kept for their third album, X and Y, although with the addition of electronic influences and extensive use of synthesizers, having a grander scale in terms of both sound and existential themes. Craig McLean, from The Guardian, called it the work of an increasingly driven, punchier band, describing its overall melodies as heartfelt stuff, with thumping guitar lines and emotive piano. The lyrics on the record have also been considered to be ruminations on Martin's doubts, fears, hopes, and loves, his words are earnest and vague, so listeners can identify with the underlying concepts in the songs. Kevin Devine of Hybrid Magazine wrote that Buckland's gleaming guitar sound gives X and Y a euphonic radiance, and thematically, the lyrics contain a running thread of importance of trying, as well as the need for basic communication amongst the cacophony of confusion in the world. With Viva La Vida, Earth and All His Friends and the subsequent Prospects March EP, Coldplay further diversified their style and explored new territory following the completion of what they saw as a trilogy of albums. The band experimented with many different instruments, including electric violins, tack pianos, santwas and orchestras, all while using more layered productions. They also tried distinct song structures and vocal identities at the suggestion of producer Brian Eno, drawing influences from Oriental, Hispanic, African, and Middle Eastern sounds. The title track, Viva La Vida, is considered Baroque pop and fourth single Strawberry Swing has been noted to feature psychedelic inspirations. They dabbled in shoegaze on hidden track Chinese sleep chant as well. Lyrics are more universal in comparison to previous material, with the subject matter being more collective as the band delves into love, life, war and death. Martin also commented the revolution motifs were inspired by Victor Hugo's novel Les Miserables. Those themes, along with some of the oriental influences, remained in 2011's Milo Xylato, a concept album that follows the story of two characters in the style of a rock opera. It expanded the spectrum of Coldplay's sound by including more electronic elements than before and featuring mostly upbeat tones for the first time, resulting in a pop-rock style with modern, urban and dance melodies. According to Champion, the band originally wanted to make an acoustic record, so when Paradise started to take shape, they decided to begin a separate electronic album. However, the two of them ultimately became a single body of work, with songs like Charlie Brown and Us Against the World getting reworked into their current versions. Berryman added that they approached the project with a lot of confidence. 
Lyrically, Martin said that he was inspired by old-school American graffiti, the White Rose Movement, and being able to speak out or follow your passion, even if everybody seems against it. A comic book based on the record's plot was released in partnership with Mark Osborne as well. For Ghost Stories, Coldplay adopted a melancholic and somber style considered reminiscent of their debut, while incorporating electronica, R&B, synth-pop and ambient influences. Its melodies are also noticeably darker and more minimalistic than Milo Xylato, having sparse arrangements that reflect their desire to keep a sense of space without being afraid of silence or layering too many sounds. The project is considered a breakup album as well, exploring lyrically how past events in one's life affect the present. Martin called it a journey of learning about unconditional love after his divorce from Gwyneth Paltrow. One year later, A Head Full of Dreams was released with a similar style but featuring bright and uplifting tones instead, making contrast with its predecessor while also introducing elements of disco and funk, particularly in lead single Adventure of a Lifetime. In the lyrics, they worked on subjects of unity, dreaming, parenthood, forgiveness, healing, and thankfulness. In 2017, the band made Kaleidoscope EP available as a companion piece to the album, including a live version of Something Just Like This, their EDM collaboration with the Chainsmokers, and Brian Eno's returning production on a L.I.E.N.S. Meanwhile, tracks such as All I Can Think About Is You and Hypnotized mix Coldplay's newfound pop style with their alternative rock roots, setting the template for everyday life, which saw a return to the experimentation and organic sounds of Viva La Vida or Death and All His Friends while having new influences from gospel, blues and classical music. The song Arabesque, which was released as the lead single along with Orphans, was particularly noted to draw from jazz fusion and Afrobeat inspirations as well. The band continued their lyrical themes of positivity, equality, hope, legacy and humanity, but also included loss, pain and commentaries on political and social issues such as racism, police brutality, gun control and refugee crisis, being their first album to feature profanity. This multi-style approach was also present in 2021's Music of the Spheres, although now leaning more towards their pop sounds. According to Martin, the planets and space imagery are a canvas to explore the human experience, it's really another record about life as a human person, but given this freedom that comes when you pretend it's about other creatures in other places. He also was inspired by the Star Wars film franchise, which made him wonder what other artists could be like across the universe after watching the fictional Moss Eisley Cantina band perform. Champion further added that while everyday life was about making the big questions personal, this album takes the personal and make it into big questions. New musical influences can be heard in the songs Human Heart and Coloratura, with the former being an a cappella collaboration with We Are King and Jacob Collier, while the latter is a progressive rock ballad running at 10 minutes and 18 seconds, making it the band's longest song to date. Chapter 2 Section 3 Influences Coldplay's music have been compared with U2, Aha, Oasis, R.E.M. and Radiohead. They acknowledge Scottish band Travis and American singer Jeff Buckley as major influences on their early material as well which was mostly produced by Ken Nelson. Martin is known to be a fan of Bruce Springsteen, mentioned spending three years trying to sound like Eddie Vedder before Buckley, and commented listening to many hymns when he was young due to his religious upbringing. During a 2021 interview, he cited Belgian singer-songwriter Stromae as another influence, noting he is one of our heroes you know, he is one of those people that comes along and completely inspires you all over again. Buckland, on the other hand, stated that the Stone Roses were one of the reasons why he learned to play guitar. In 2020, he shared on social media playlists with some of his favorite tracks and artists from each decade, including The Velvet Underground, Carole King, Joy Division, Talking Heads, Kate Bush, Donna Summer, Bjork, Beastie Boys and many others. He said during an interview in the following year that his favorite song of all time is Teardrop by Massive Attack. Meanwhile, Berryman is known to be inspired by artists like James Brown, Marvin Gaye, Cool and the Gang and the Funk Brothers. He further added that his musical taste is hard to condense it down but could not live without the Beatles or Motown. As for Champion, he commented that knowing how to play violin and piano since he was eight years old gave a different perspective on drums, which he only learned to play after joining the band. During his youth he listened to Bob Dylan, Tom Waits, Nick Cave and traditional Irish folk music. He also named Ginger Baker, Dave Grohl and John Bonham as some of his favorite drummers. For a rush of blood to the head, they drew inspiration from Echo and the Bunnymen, George Harrison, and News. Their third studio album, X and Y, was particularly influenced by Kraftwerk, Depeche Mode, and Johnny Cash. The song Till Kingdom Come was originally written as a collaboration with the latter before he died. Aside from Nelson, the band also began to work with Danton Supple for the record. 
In 2008's Viva La Vida, or Death and All His Friends, Coldplay's style was moving towards art rock, being inspired by My Bloody Valentine, Blur, and Arcade Fire. After partnering with Brian Eno and John Hopkins, they started to incorporate elements of ambient music and electronica into their compositions. The two producers returned in Milo Xylato, though the former had a more direct role by helping to write the songs. In 2014, Ghost Stories saw the group collaborating with Paul Epworth. Producers Tim Byerling and Madion were involved as well, which resulted in some tracks having a more danceable flavor, especially the single A Sky Full of Stars. Made available in 2015, A Head Full of Dreams featured producing and songwriting duo Stargate. Other longtime partners include Davide Rossi, Bill Rocco, Rick Simpson, and Daniel Green. The latter three are referred as the dream team on everyday life and all four work with the band since Viva La Vida or Death and All His Friends. For their ninth album, Music of the Spheres, Coldplay invited producer Max Martin. The song People of the Pride is noted for having an orchestral introduction inspired by a Beyoncé performance at the Global Citizen Festival, while Coloratura drew comparisons to Pink Floyd. Chapter 2 Section 4, Live Performances Coldplay are known to make sure each tour is its own dazzling, light-up spectacular, with their visual shows making use of lasers, fireworks, confetti cannons and interactive LED wristbands. The latter is considered a signature piece of their performances as the band is credited with popularizing its use. When reviewing live in Buenos Aires, Sam Sodomsky from Pitchfork stated that it makes a strong case for the legacy of one of the 21st century's most enduring live acts, a perspective echoed by The Guardian's Alexis Petridis after describing the band's setlists as a bullish reminder of how got, and then stayed, huge. Both reviewers also commented on how Martin often interacts with the public between each song's performance. The band are known for occasionally covering other artists, including De Musica Ligera by Soda Stereo during the A Head Full of Dreams tour, and Nothing Man by Pearl Jam during a one-off 2021 concert at Climate Pledge Arena. For Ghost Stories tour, on the other hand, they performed at more intimate venues such as Royal Albert Hall and the Beacon Theatre. The concerts used new features like a laser harp and the reactable. A similar approach was used for everyday life over their environmental concerns, with the band making small public shows for charity and a special concert at the Amman Citadel in Jordan. While reviewing the latter, Dan Stubbs from NME concluded that on stage is where Coldplay come alive and make the most sense. Chapter 3, Public Image Coldplay are considered polarizing pop-slash-rock icons, being widely praised and criticized by music reviewers as well as the public. They have been noted to maintain a close relationship with fans through videos, letters and social media, becoming one of the most followed bands in the world on Twitter and Instagram, ranking at third and seventh place respectively. They are also known to tease upcoming releases through Easter eggs and clues around the world. On a survey published by the Daily Mirror listing the most popular and unpopular artists in the United Kingdom, Coldplay were among the 20 most voted acts on both lists, the only other bands with the same distinction were ABBA and U2. In 2000, Alan McGee described them as Bedwetter's music, a comment he would later apologize for in 2020, adding, I don't like their music but I don't think they are that bad. Buckland responded at the time by saying, we are trying to be who we are, you know. Pretending to be a bit mad would just be sad. Journalist John Perellis called Coldplay the most insufferable band of the decade, describing the X and Y album as faultless to a fault, with instrumental tracks purged of any glimmer of human frailty. On the other hand, idolaters Carl Williott in 2015 compared it to the works of Phil Collins, noting that in spite of how such perfectionism is always considered corny in its time, they had cachet in subsequent eras because the production values, songcraft and sheer talent stood the test of time. Coldplay have often been accused of sticking to a formula as well. Conversely, some critics have argued that even though they never totally break out from the conventions of a genre, they do travel between them. Furthermore, when writing for The Guardian in 2019, Ben Beaumont Thomas commented how from genre-spanning albums to collaborating with Brian Eno and Beyoncé, they are far more radical than people give them credit for, a sentiment echoed by NME's Charlotte Crowell while reviewing their eighth album Everyday Life. Uprox have stated Coldplay will always be an irresistible target for a certain kind of person because they epitomize mainstream pop rock more than any other act from the past 20 years. Adding that mainstream bands are the easiest music entities to mock and how it is presumed that there is nothing to get with this band, but if that was actually true, they wouldn't be so polarizing. Similarly, The Independent commented that they are often positive, distinctly uncontroversial and inoffensive while in the modern world, if you're not causing outrage you may as well not exist. 
In a special article titled 25 Songs That Tell Us Where Music Is Going, the New York Times selected him for the weekend and concluded that Coldplay's brand of widescreen pop attracts easy put-downs such as Edgeless and Corny, but like Phil Collins, Michael McDonald, ABBA or any number of desperately unhip artists, their image will evaporate while their songs will weather the years, the band is built to endure. Chapter 4, Legacy Chapter 4 Section 1, Achievements Coldplay are considered the most successful band of the 21st century. With over 100 million albums sold globally, they are one of the best-selling artists of all time. Parachutes, A Rush of Blood to the Head and X and Y all rank amongst the best-selling albums of United Kingdom's history, the latter was the third fastest-selling record ever in the country upon release. In 2008, Viva La Vida became the first song by a British group to top Billboard Hot 100 since Wannabe by the Spice Girls in 1997. The track was praised as one of the best songs of the decade by Rolling Stone and BBC America as well. Its parent album, Viva La Vida or Death and All His Friends, was the best-selling of the decade in the digital download format. In 2013, Coldplay were named the most influential British celebrities in the world by Forbes. They would then perform at the Super Bowl 50 halftime show in 2016, earning the biggest audience in history for a group and male act. The event also helped them to become the year's most Googled band. In 2017, they finished the A Head Full of Dreams tour, which is currently the sixth highest grossing tour of all time. During 2021, Coldplay headlined the Glastonbury Festival for a record extending fifth time, and became the first British group ever to debut at number one on Billboard Hot 100 with My Universe. The band have won numerous awards throughout their career as well, including nine Brit Awards, being the most awarded and nominated group of all time in the ceremony. They are the first act in history to win British Album of the Year three times and British Group four times, scoring the most nominations for both of these categories. Coldplay have also won seven Grammy Awards from 36 nominations, receiving Song of the Year and Record of the Year once, while being nominated for Album of the Year twice. In 2009, they received a Energy Award of Honor for their career accomplishments and impact on the music industry. Their song Atlas, released as part of the Hunger Games, Catching Fire soundtrack in 2013, was nominated at the 19th Critics' Choice Awards and shortlisted for the 87th Academy Awards. The members of the band were named Songwriters of the Year by the Ivor Novello Awards and ASCAP London Music Awards in 2003 and 2010 respectively as well. In 2016, Coldplay were honored with a Godlike Genius Award from the NME Awards, which recognize careers of music icons who have been pioneers in the industry. They have won seven Billboard Music Awards, two silver prizes at the Can Lions International Festival of Creativity and one American Music Award, being ranked as the sixth most awarded group of all time by Fuse as of 2014. Chapter 4 Section 2 Impact According to Forbes, Coldplay have become the standard for the current alternative scene and through consistent performing and adventuresome work, they continue to grow into one of the finest live bands in all of music. 2002's A Rush of Blood to the Head was one of the albums chosen by the Royal Mail for a set of postage stamps celebrating classic British records from the last 40 years, being also ranked among the best releases of all time by the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Enemy, and Rolling Stone. The latter publication named The Scientist as the 50th best song of the 21st century, while placing Clocks and Fix You at number 490 and 392 respectively on their list of the 500 greatest songs of all time. In the Recording Academy's 20th anniversary review of Parachutes, John O'Brien labeled it as the band's most influential album to date, impacting the work of artists such as The Fray, Snow Patrol, and One Republic. He further noted Coldplay, and to a lesser extent Travis, helped to open the floodgates for those who didn't subscribe to the rock and roll star way of thinking. Meanwhile, their breakthrough single Yellow is considered one of the best tracks of the 2000s decade by Pitchfork and was included in Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's songs that shaped rock and roll exhibition for being one of the most successful and important recordings in music. When discussing key events in the history of rock, The Guardian mentioned the band set the direction of mainstream rock for years to come by releasing the song and ushered in a fresh timbre of songwriting, yearning melancholy, buoyed by a sense of uplift. In 2011, the H1 ranked them as one of the greatest musical acts in history, while 10 years later they were in Parade's 100 Best Rock Bands of All Time list as the newest group inside the top. 50. Coldplay are also regarded as one of the most influential bands of the 21st century, inspiring the work of artists like Ed Sheeran, Harry Styles, Dua Lipa, BTS, Imagine Dragons, The Killers, Bruno Mars, Justin Timberlake, Kanye West, Phineas O'Connell, Jacob Collier, Future Mumford and Sons, David Guetta, John Bellion.
21 Pilots, Leona Lewis, Alessia Cara, The Chainsmokers, Lauv, Sean Mendes, Mike Will Made It, H.E.R., American Authors, The Script, Morat, Alok, Travis Scott, Shepard, Ian Sweet, John Mayer, Sigrid, J. Balvin, Brandy, Maron Morris, Ramstein, Swedish House Mafia, and more. Their songs have been widely sampled by other musicians, including Drake, Frank Ocean and Chance the Rapper, being also covered by acts such as Lady Gaga, Sam Smith, Casey Musgraves, and more. According to U2 lead vocalist Bono, Coldplay were among the major influences for the band's 13th album Songs of Innocence. Music arranger and producer Matthias Billand explained that he made Coldplay-type rhythm chords for Taylor Swift's Wildest Dreams. Xyla Band's creator Jason Regler stated that he conceived the idea for the flashing wristbands while in one of the band's concerts. Artists like Jay-Z and Swift have followed the trend and incorporated their own versions of the product on live performances. South Korean music director Lee Jiso commented Life in Technicolor 2 was one of the inspirations for the soundtrack of In Our Prime. The British phonographic industry have also reported that Coldplay are one of the acts that most helped to boost British music exports across the world, with 2016 and 2020 being their years of most notable contribution. Chapter 5, Other Activities Chapter 5 Section 1, Philanthropy Coldplay donates 10% from all of their profits to charity. The fund is held in a bank account that none of the members can access. They currently endorse over 30 organizations, including Amnesty International, Migrant Offshore Aid Station and the Global Citizen Festival. The band have also been vocal about fair trade, supporting Oxfam's Make Trade Fair campaign by collecting over 70,000 signatures for the Big Noise petition at live performances, from the A Rush of Blood to the Head Tour and Twisted Logic Tour. They have partnered with the Make Poverty History movement as well. In 2009, Coldplay auctioned many significant memorabilia, such as Martin's first guitar and the Globe from Parachute's album cover. Signed lithographs were also sold and proceeds went to the kids' company, helping vulnerable young people in London. The band performed a slightly modified version of a message, entitled A Message 2010, at the Hope for Haiti Now Telethon special, raising money for the victims of the 2010 Haiti earthquake. Berryman commented that you can make people aware of issues. It isn't very much effort for us at all, if it can help people, then we want to do it. In 2012, album artists staged an exhibition made up of artwork from Milo Xylato at Proud Gallery in Camden, it raised over £610,000 for Kids Company. Two years later Martin joined the charity group Band Aid for a second time, performing alongside British and Irish acts on a new version of Do They Know It's Christmas, which had its money raised for the Ebola crisis in Western Africa. In July 2017, the band made a donation to the University of Southampton's Centre for Cancer Immunology campaign, which was the United Kingdom's first centre dedicated to cancer immunology research. Coldplay have also contributed to the Plastic Oceans album by artists Project Earth. The record was released on the 20th of February 2018 at the Ocean Plastics Crisis Summit in London and raised awareness along with funds to counter the plastic pollution. On the same year, they released Global Citizen, Episode 1 under the pseudonym Los Unidades. All royalties were directed to the organization's efforts of education and advocacy towards the end of extreme poverty. In 2020, the band released a music video for Trouble in Town, which was inspired by George Orwell's Animal Farm and had its proceeds from streaming and publishing donated to the Innocence Project and the African Children's Feeding Scheme. They declared support to the ocean cleanup in March 2021 as well, sponsoring two watercrafts that collect plastic from polluted rivers before it reaches the sea in Malaysia. Months later, the band announced a long-term partnership with One Tree Planted to plant a tree for every ticket sold at the Music of the Spheres World Tour, which is part of their efforts to make touring more sustainable. The endeavor will be carried out through a global reforestation agreement, and is set to begin in California, Romania, Haiti, Brazil and the Andes. Chapter 5 Section 2, Politics and Activism Martin, who lives in the United States, spoke out against the 2003 invasion of Iraq led by country along with other military forces during a Teenage Cancer Trust concert at London's Royal Albert Hall, encouraging the sold-out venue's crowd to sing against war. He also showed support for Democratic presidential candidates John Kerry in 2004, and Barack Obama in 2008. One year later, the band started to take part in Meat Free Mondays, a food campaign started by Paul McCartney which attempts to help slow climate change by having at least one meat-free day a week. In 2011, Coldplay endorsed the song Freedom for Palestine by posting a link to the music video on their social media, they received over 12,000 comments in less than day, with fans either agreeing or disagreeing with the message. 
Some threatened to boycott them and created a group that demanded an apology to Israel. Eventually the post was deleted from their pages, however, Frank Barat of One World stated it was actually removed by Facebook after thousands of people and computer-generated posts reported it as abusive, rather than the band's management. Coldplay have advocated for the LGBTQ community as well, sparking controversy with their performance at the Super Bowl 50 halftime show. The band were accused of promoting the gay agenda by conservatives for the show's last moment, where the audience flipped over rainbow-colored placards that read Believe in Love. They are also among the artists that signed a public letter supporting the Equality Act in the United States. In June 2016, Coldplay were in favor of Vote Remain at the United Kingdom European Union membership referendum. Following the Brexit result, which saw 52% of the country voting to leave the European Union despite the majority of younger people voting to remain, Martin commented that this decision does not represent us or indeed most of our generation, and the generation following us. A year later, they performed at Ariana Grande's One Love Manchester Benefit concert, which was organized in response to the Manchester Arena bombing and raised funds to help victims of the attack, as well as their families. Months later, they performed as special guests at the concert for Charlottesville following the events of the Unite the Right rally. In November 2019, the band released Everyday Life, which saw them voicing more prominently their stance against racism, police brutality and gun violence. Chapter 5 Section 3 Endorsements Despite their worldwide popularity Coldplay have remained notoriously protective of how their material appears in the media, allowing its use only on rare occasions. In 2002, it was reported they turned down over $85 million in contracts from companies that include Gatorade, Diet Coke, and Gap. Martin said we would not be able to live with ourselves if we sold the song's meanings like that. They agree, however, to use advertisements for promoting the music itself, with the first instance being Viva La Vida in 2008, when the band signed a deal with Apple, and promoted the single's exclusive availability on iTunes. Additionally, Martin appeared at one of the company's events in September 2010. After the death of Steve Jobs, Coldplay performed four tracks at the Apple campus in Cupertino, posthumously thanking his support in marketing the song. Six years later, they took part in a Target commercial which promoted the exclusive deluxe edition of Ghost Stories. Meanwhile, the music video for Adventure of a Lifetime, which was directed by Matt White Cross and recorded at the Imaginarium, had a Beats product placement. The company was allowed to use some parts of the video on their commercials as a return for covering the budget. In 2018, director John M. Chu revealed that he sent a letter directly to the band laying out all his reasons in order to get permission for using yellow on crazy rich Asians. After agreeing to have the song used in the movie a Chinese language cover was commissioned as well. In 2021, Coldplay announced a major partnership with German multinational BMW as part of their efforts to make touring as sustainable as possible. They elaborated by commenting on how the company's technology, which includes the first recyclable car batteries in the world, is able to power live performances almost entirely from renewable energy. Their shows will incorporate the use of solar installations, a kinetic floor in each venue, and generators powered by hydro-treated vegetable oil. As part of the deal, the band contributed creatively in the marketing for two electric cars from the company and allowed higher power to be used in television advertisements. Chapter 6 – Band Members Chris Martin, lead vocals, keyboards, piano, rhythm guitar, harmonica. Johnny Buckland, lead guitar, backing vocals, keyboards. Guy Berryman, bass, backing vocals, keyboards, rhythm guitar, synthesizers, percussion. Will Champion, drums, backing vocals, keyboards, piano, bass, rhythm guitar, violin, tin whistle, percussion. Phil Harvey, manager, creative director. Chapter 7 Discography Parachutes A Rush of Blood to the Head X and Y Viva La Vida, or Death and All His Friends Milo Xylato Ghost Stories A Head Full of Dreams Everyday Life Music of the Spheres Chapter 8, Filmography Coldplay, Live 2012 Coldplay, A Head Full of Dreams Coldplay, Everyday Life, Live in Jordan. Coldplay, Reimagined. Chapter 9, Tours. Parachutes Tour. A Rush of Blood to the Head Tour. Twisted Logic Tour. Viva La Vida Tour. Milo Xylato Tour. Ghost Stories Tour. A Head Full of Dreams Tour. Music of the Spheres World Tour.